and welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Eric. What's up? We have Tom. Hello there. And we have me, Adam. How you guys doing today? Pretty um, good. I have had a lazy ass day. I have. I literally just got in the shower 40 minutes ago. Oh, nice. I, I did nothing. I've done absolutely nothing, except I ate a hot dog. I am just recent to the shower as well, but not because of laziness. Um, We, as you saw last week, we just got a new pup. Well, today we picked back up our old pup. So today was the first day of the two dogs getting to see each other. Ooh. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> it was uh, interesting. Um, Adam heard me yelling a minute ago because um they finally are starting to play now but aloy has gotten bigger while she was at the trainers and she <laughs> was bullying the shit out of this pup <laughs> so if you hear a hey or some barking or whatnot it's going to be the dogs that just do their thing but yeah other than that it's been a fun day it's been kind of crazy crazy day i'm crazy glad the dog i'm glad the dogs are getting along yeah, I wasn't too terribly worried about it because Aloy's pretty good with other dogs. Mm -hmm. But her being rough is something that kind of sucks because in pup, you don't want it to get beat up. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to take a little bit for her to realize her own strength and uh, and size comparatively. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... I guess we'll get going with the games. I'm Let's get going with that. the games. We'll get the games going. <laughs> so, do you guys do anything good all week? Or was no. it all boring fucking week? Oh, the <laughs> that top is a very <laughs> resounding no. What happened? Are you okay? <laughs> uh, so, this week was actually kind of kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I just realized the thing I was forgetting is putting on my good headphones because I've got my my stupid ass AirPods in. So, all right, cool. I might switch that mid show. Um, but you ever have one of those weeks where like everything is going great. And then something happens in the middle of the week to just throw the whole thing sideways. So this week at work, like I was ahead on my projects. I was getting shit done. It was all coming together. And then I realized on Wednesday, Oh shit, there's a massive bug that has taken down this critical piece. And now I've got to redesign like a core component thing. Uh, which totally threw me off of my week. So it was fun. That sucks. Hate to see it. Yeah. Yeah. My week wasn't great, but it wasn't for anything like that. So, yay. So, it was okay. I, f I feel like I got off work early most days last week, which is which was a nice little surprise. You got off work so early the one day I thought you were just taking it off because I jumped <laughs> in and I saw you and Rob in a chat and I'm like, oh, they're running Tarkov. I'm like, oh, Adam didn't work today. What, uh, That's kind of what I thought. I wonder what time that would have been. Was that uh, Tuesday? I don't or remember Wednesday. when it was. No, Wednesday. What? Yeah, I was well, still, like signed on for work and saw <laughs> you in there. Well, <laughs> Wednesday, uh, it was a very, very odd day where we we came in. And we waited for an hour for like the the coordinator to get to the store, and then I guess what we were supposed to do that day couldn't have gotten done on top of the store having inventory, which means that even if they had the stuff we needed to to do the thing, we still wouldn't have been able to do the thing. So they were just like, "Oh, okay, well, there's nothing to do here," and I was just like, "All right, sick. I'm gonna take vacation time the rest of the day because I do not want to go somewhere else and work." Because I'm lazy and I'm close to home and I have an out. <laughs> nice. Well, were, were they going to send you somewhere else? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to enjoy it a little bit. But yeah, that was probably the day I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think I was playing Tarkov at like, I don't know, 10 a.m. Nice. Something like that. 10 or 11. That now, do you notice a, a difference in the player base? in different times during Tarkov? Like, are the weekends way sweatier than the weekdays, or, or what? Uh, you know, Tarkov is one of those games where you're not constantly engaging with other players. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's in between, or, like, some raids you might not even see anybody. Uh, so I, I don't really notice as much. 
Like I think a game like like Rocket League or Siege or Counter Strike or something where you're constantly interacting with other players, so where you can really notice that like you know weekend sweat fest or whatever going on. Yeah, that makes sense. Have you guys noticed in like Rocket League? Have um, you? I guess Tom, you don't play that much, but yeah, I I only <laughs> play during the show. <laughs> it's more of a season a season cadence than a daily cadence, if that makes sense. Oh. Oh, okay. Like you don't play at the start of the season if you're a super hypersensitive rank guy. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the season, everyone's tryharding and I don't like that term. Everyone's grinding. Tryharding. Yeah, I hate that term too. In a competitive video game, how dare you try to win? (laughs) No, that bugged the piss out of me. What kind of idiot (laughs) (laughs) tries to win his games? (laughs) <laughs> I go I go back and forth on this all the time because mm-hmm. I, I have been that guy because I've been actually grinding a lot of Counter-Strike recently, grinding, only in casuals, um, <laughs> where, like, I'll call out, you know, hey, bomb down at B. Um, I think they're going to rotate mid. And some guy's like, man, whatever. I'm just going to stick here. And then one of my teammates is like, man, you don't want to win? It's like, dude, it's casual. And I'm like, yeah, it is casual. Like, we're just here to dick around and have fun. Not that like you'd intentionally throw, but if you really want to, want to, I don't know, get sweaty in Counter Strike, there are competitive modes, right? Well, but there, there's a difference. Like I always want to win. Like I, I am a hyper competitive person. That's just me by nature. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's others that they want to win, but at the same time, like they don't want to. They don't want to put any effort to, into that win. <laughs> yeah, they know that if they go into competitive, they're going to get their dick smacked. That's what it comes down <laughs> to. For lack of a uh, gentlemanly term. Um, I think some people so, probably enjoy getting their dick smacked. I don't know if that's a good term for that. I, you know, to, to each their own. <laughs> I'm not going to judge somebody for wanting to get their dick smacked. God damn it. <laughs> but, <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying, though. Like um, <laughs> when you go into a competitive, you're you're going to go against people that I want to win at Rocket League. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play against Lion Blaze. You know, I mean, there, there's like there's different tiers of players, and I think sticking to casual is fine for people that aren't like a top five percent player. But that's just my take on it. I play to win. If I have a teammate that's just sticking around and is not trying to win, it bugs me. Uh, like not, I'm not talking yeah. like throwing, but just like if you tell them, hey, like this dude's about to come to B, everyone's at A. Ooh. Can you come over here? And everyone's like, nah, dog, I'm sick in today. Like that, that kind of bugs me. <laughs> that that sounds almost I, like I deliberately it. contrarian <clears throat> in that specific instance. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's like if you like, don't I, care I about it. the outcome of the game, just go into like a target mode or play <laughs> yeah. against box. Like, I, I will play casual, and I'll play... I mean, really, my warm-ups are, like, deathmatch and gun game and stuff like that. But in casual, I'm usually working on routing. I'm working on sight lines. I'm working on, okay, what gun do I use in what situation at what part of the map, uh, depending on, you know, the, the economy and whether or not I think everybody on the goddamn team is going to have an op. And, um, you know, there's, there's definitely ways that you can personally improve and grind, even if your team isn't doing that. You can work on you. Yes, but it, I feel games like Counter Strike. It's in Rocket League. One player focusing on them can help a lot more than just one person in Counter Strike focusing on them. Because if you get into a five on one, you're done. I mean, yes, it can happen. Usually, reverse, but sometimes those five on ones is a or uh, sometimes that's good practice. Being yeah. You, you gotta you gotta practice for those clutch or kick moments, God. which I I did see. I was um, I was playing CS um, a couple of nights ago, and it was or not not a couple of nights ago last night with Fitzy, and it was really unfortunate. We saw some absolute bad manners happening because our team was was uh, you know wrecking shit at one point in the game, and one guy just couldn't clutch up. Like he was at the bottom of the leaderboard. He wasn't. He wasn't trying to throw, but he was just bad. And that's fine. Yeah. You can be I'm bad fine at video with games. I'm yeah. fine with that. Like, you, you could tell by like the way he was routing the maps. He, he had not played Counter-Strike. Like, this was like his first 10 hours into the game. Um, and that's okay. But some asshole kicked him because he said, we're never going to win with this guy. 
Because like, oh, in, come on, a one v two situations, like he, he lost, and that's that's fine. That will happen, especially when you're first starting out. But they successfully kicked the guy, even though Fitzy and I were spamming no. Um, the oh. rest of the team's like, nah, fuck this dude. That's annoying. I don't hate that. So it's don't take my game. don't take my oh, competitiveness no. the wrong way. I want to win. You can suck. I might get frustrated with your suck, but you can suck. That's fine. <laughs> I don't like it. For, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Like, that's that's fair. perfectly okay that's to fair. suck. Yeah, as long as you're trying. That's my biggest thing. Like if you're just dicking around and not trying, that's that's yeah. when I start having beef. Yeah, this dude was trying. He was just bad at it. And that that's fine. It, it's frustrating, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. What's the difference? You're that's... you're you're more frustrated with the situation itself. You're not frustrated with the person specifically. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that's like the you could tell they were trying. Like after after a little bit, because we had played with this guy for like two entire rounds. But after the first round in the map. Um, he was starting to learn the lines. He was starting to learn where to go uh, and starting to figure out, you know, okay, this is what I do in these situations. He, he wasn't an idiot. He was just bad. So for full disclosure, I went through my high school basketball career for like our varsity team winning two games in four seasons. So I am well aware with the idea of you can <laughs> suck, just be trying. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's, that's my philosophy on that. 100%. But I, I hate the... Um, the, the it's now become a copy pasta, but the fucking ninja copy pasta of if you're not a sweat lord, if you're not trying 100 percent of the time, why are you even here, bro? Like, nah, nah, dude. Sometimes because I've I had just, a hard day at yeah, work, exactly, and I just want to fucking click heads, man. That's why I'm here. <laughs> because I'm chilling and I enjoy chilling. Yeah. Just because you don't enjoy like, chilling doesn't make my chilling I, a waste of time. <laughs> I I listen to music playing Counter Strike. Is that good competitive behavior no no absolutely, absolutely not. not but am i chilling hell yeah i am well you I didn't hear that guy no world. dude all i could hear was <laughs> like the weekend's new album <laughs> like it's it's a low a low drone of music right it's not like i'm over here head banging ignoring footsteps i can still hear <laughs> shit but it i wouldn't ever do it like if i were in a tournament setting or in comp right yeah obviously right. yeah okay i think this right here for the rocket league people will put where i draw the line on this if i'm in a casual match and a dude doesn't know how to fucking rotate fine whatever if i'm in a casual match and the dude is bumping me all the time on purpose nah. no fuck that guy yeah there is a massive difference between being being bad or being casual or being chill and being a nuisance like if you are griefing in the game fuck you if you are team flashing in counter-strike fuck you well okay team flashing in counter-strike i might do that because i suck well, okay, yeah, yeah that's full that's disclosure. Right. That happens a lot. <laughs> I do that a lot, but not on purpose. Like, I'm talking about you just spawned in, and some guy's just like, Mop, drop a grenade, right at spawn. No, yeah. fuck that. Or the douchebag in our, our rainbow that uh, team kills right out the gate. Oh, yeah. Man. Although in Pavlov, it is hilarious because people are, are operating with their real hands and bodies, right? A lot of people will pull the pin and, and try to hold the, the grenade and fuck up. And like either hit a button on their Vive wands or just absent mindedly open their hand on the knuckles and drop a flash right in spawn because oh. they just oh, didn't think sucks. about it. Which is <laughs> hilarious. Every time it happens, it's hilarious. But I, I do gotta say, I've been playing some Pavlov this week, and um, the differences between the Counter Strike and Pavlov community are night and day. Like everybody in VR seems chill as fuck mostly because we're all wearing $1,000 pieces of equipment on our face. Um, and the Counter-Strike people are so angry. Like, not all of them, but a lot of them are super angry. I really wish I could just chill out like I do in Pavlov most nights. Yeah, I have found that about all VR games I've played, is the VR community is hyper chill. Sounds like I need to get into the VR yeah. community, because... Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm it, into that. It is, <laughs> it is the, some of the chillest. Like rec room, just oh jumping into a fucking charades lobby, and everyone's just like hard <laughs> chilling. Yeah, like yeah. a lot of times when uh, it's because I am regularly up till three in the morning on the weekends. Um, but a lot of times when like nobody's on seventy two PC, and I want to you know, chill out and be a little bit social, I'll jump into Pavlov, like into a standard search and destroy mission just to fucking talk to people like hey man how's it going like good man i'm drinking this whiskey i just got it tonight and then i just spent like an hour chilling with these dudes talking about what whiskey we're drinking while we're all trying to click heads or shoot heads 
Click heads and say, like, you're, you're doing hands. Pavlov wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm using my mouse and keyboard in Pavlov <laughs> with my Cheater. headset on. Cheater. Oh, you're actually, like, moving room scale with a fucking mouse and keyboard? Exactly. Like, you have it mounted to your chest with, like, a little tray <laughs> that folds up when you go prone. I just have my mic. <laughs> yeah, I could hear no, that. That would, that would be cool. I could actually use something like that. That would be awful. Don't you ever say that would be cool. <laughs> I'm going to buy a 3D printer just to make this. God. Oh, um, so I didn't try something new food wise. I shouldn't say new. You guys ever seen like the bird's eye voila meal packs? Yep. Like the, it has like chicken and noodles and sauce and veggies and everything. And you just throw it in a skillet with like a cup of water. And oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So we, we get those from time to time because, you know, for a quick ready-made meal, it's pretty good. Um, well, I was like, you know what? This probably isn't that hard to make. So I actually just, like, did all of it from, like, buying the raw ingredients and doing it. it oh, nice. Good. I was pretty happy with it. Now, so you what kind of, what kind of the... thing was it? So it was, like, the uh, garlic, garlic chicken. That, that was based off their garlic chicken. But effectively, like, take some minced garlic. What the hell is that guy doing? <laughs> uh, took some minced garlic, like, sauteed that a little bit, then added a cup of water, seasoned it with a little bit of onion powder, because I forgot onions, and, like, a couple other seasonings, like pepper, salt, and everything. Kind of let that stew in there for a minute. Then added the uh, noodles and chicken to let all that start to cook, and then added some broccoli and uh, corn in it. Turned out really damn well. I was really happy with that. Sounds good. Were you more happy with the ingredients that you bought versus the the frozen ones, or <sighs> no? Or was it was it like basically the same thing? It was close Just... to the same thing. The other okay. one, it had a little more flavor to it. The prepackaged one, mm -hmm. but in that same regard, mine was probably the prepackaged. Yeah, the prepackaged one is probably way has like way more salt than yours did. Yeah. Yeah, well, and uh, probably some other things too, but yeah, it was, it was still good though. It was my first time doing it, so I know some things I'll do differently next time. Like I'll actually get onions in on the mix instead of using onion powder. Maybe try to do something to actually make more of a sauce, a thicker sauce. But yeah, it was all good. Corn? Uh, no, it was uh, corn. Like I bought the twisted transistor variety, and I uh, threw that in. Dlas. But yeah, Ooh, uh, I would have went solid. with freak on a leash corn, but you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I just wasn't feeling it. I, you know, I had steak the night before and it's so similar. <laughs> I am. Um, uh, while we're on this, this little topic, I tried a new Indian place the other day and I got, I got two things cause I wanted to, you know, try, try a couple things from the new place. So I got a uh, sog paneer, which is kind of my go-to. And I got uh, chicken tikka masala, which is the, you know, probably the most popular dish, mm. I guess, at most Indian places. And the sog paneer was really good. Uh, fantastic, like it always is. The tikka masala kind of threw me for a loop. Um, so you, you think of chicken tikka masala and it's like, what, like bite-sized cubes of chicken in that, that tomato cream sauce, right? That delicious These, tomato yeah. cream sauce. Yeah, yeah. Now... This this wasn't bite sized pieces of chicken. It's uh, you know those like pepperoni on the school pizzas, the little cubes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were like that size, little cubes of chicken like, mixed in the wait, sauce. What are you what? doing? Are you running it through like a hash brown machine? I don't, like, I don't what know, the man. What are you doing? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I was like, where's the chicken in this? And then I realized it was once I took a bite. It's these little tiny cubes of chicken. It, huh. it, it, it makes the so whole weird. thing like the yeah the whole thing is like the texture of just sauce <laughs> instead of being like a sauce with chicken in it. I do not like the idea of that. Now don't get me wrong, what? it tasted it tasted great. It was really okay. good, but I, I would prefer actual pieces like bigger pieces of chicken. But something to bite yeah. into. Yeah. Like you could accidentally swallow those whole and not notice. You could, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it was it was very surprising. I wasn't ready for that. But it yeah, also I reminded me that uh, sog paneer is the superior dish. Dude, oh my god. Nothing compares yeah. to a good sog paneer. I've I love chicken korma. 
with that coconut sauce and it's all nice and creamy and oh my god you you get some stuff with uh like the toasted almonds in it so you get a little bit of crunch or the maybe it's toasted cashews either way you get a little bit of nutty crunch in every bite and uh believe it or not they throw raisins in it and they're fucking delicious it adds a little bit of sweetness to that spicy sauce oh oh man i'm gonna have to try Damn that sometime. Well, now i'm gonna order indian food tonight i'm a big palak paneer Palak like paneer really is like sog paneer. It's the same thing. Well, with the green sauce, like the yeah. spinach sauce. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I've always called it or heard it called a uh, palak paneer or palak paneer. It's the palak and sog both mean spinach. Oh. It's kind of like car okay. and automobile both mean basically the same thing. In that case, yes, I agree with your earlier statement. <laughs> Like the place I used to go would give you a dish and that was actually considered a secondary, like a side. Oh. Was to get that. And that was excellent. So you'd get like your chicken tikka masala and then you would get the palak paneer. And then of course you got your pita bread and just ah. Uh, you mean naan? Or or even better, a naan. Dude, garlic naan, that's garlic my shit. naan is possibly the best type of bread that exists. Agreed. It, it's really good. Like, I, I love me some sourdough, but my God, nothing hits like good garlic naan. We used to get it a lot. Alu Matar is the best Indian. Is that a place or a, a food? It's a dish. I'm trying to I remember what it is, though. What is that? Help us out here, Dobby. Help us out. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. Help I us forget. out in the chat. As I told some of my coworkers, I Peas like potatoes. Indian food. Uh, peas, get me out of here. I like peas. I I like peas. They're, They're not my favorite, here. but I like peas. So like Indian food, a lot of times, what especially used to be, I'm trying to not be so ignorant on it now, is I would just look at stuff like, man, that looks good. I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I wouldn't know what it was. I would just <laughs> point. I mean, honestly, no matter what you get in an Indian place, it's probably going to be amazing. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just a really good cuisine. I, I enjoy their food quite all quite a lot. I will say that. What's what's funny to me is I I am not a vegetarian by any stretch of the imagination. Like my idea of a vegetarian lunch is uh, fish. You know, so, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I could go full vegetarian with Indian food and not miss the meat at all. Like I don't I don't know what they're doing, man, but. I could eat vegetarian Indian Indian food every day of my life and never get sick of it. So per like for my exposure, this is totally anecdotal, but the percentage of vegetarians I know from India compared to meat eaters from India. Yeah. Vegeta like 50, vegetarianism 50. is pretty big in India for sure. Yeah. So like they, they know how to the, the effort and work to make it absolutely fucking delicious. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to get at. They they know how to make vegetarian stuff like hearty and all uh, just fucking delicious. Not to say that like Americans and Mexicans and other type of in this cities don't know how to, but theirs is. Yeah, I could take their it's, meat. It's rights. interesting when you have an entire culture. Well, not an entire culture, right? But a significant portion of the culture that prefers a vegetarian or vegan lifestyle. Um, and what kind of foods come out of that, right? Because... Mm -hmm. American vegetarian food, I'm going to come out and say it, usually not that great, right? <laughs> because it's a relatively small part of the population over here. You don't have you know to, you're not targeting 50% of the market when you put out your food, right? I feel bad. If you're an actual, like, if you're in like Midwest and you're a vegetarian, like, oh, we got a salad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there you go. <laughs> or Dude, for, for a potatoes. long time, I was, I was dating a pretty strict vegetarian and we would go out to dinner and it would, it would honestly be like, I'd feel sorry for her because she would order, you know, three side dishes. One of which is of course, mashed potatoes. Um, because that's, that's all you got. It's like, okay, well give me three sides. I'll have the green beans, the broccoli and the, the potatoes. It's like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> is is there no goddamn meal choice here? Especially if you're vegan, because that takes even more off of the list. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's see. Oh man, I, I missed some stuff here. Sorry. The um Scott's <laughs> talking about the vegetarian stuff, I think. I can't quite read it right now, but yeah, keep going, fellas. Yeah, Dobby says, um, you know, I feel that the people who do it though do it well because of the small market. Like if you go to a vegetarian restaurant, it's quality. 
I totally agree. Like, if you okay. are going to a specialty place, and there's, um, oh, fuck, I cannot remember the name, but there was a place in Ohio that we went to forever ago, or that I went to forever ago. Um, that was some of the best vegetarian slash vegan food I've ever had. Um, it was great. But yeah, you, you, we had really had to shop around for that place. It's not like there's a ton of them. Yeah, Skyline Chili, another great example of a great vegan place. What? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> no, you had me for a sec, and I was like, you got to be trolling. It's fucking beef chili on a hot dog. If you can't call it chili. It's meat slurry. Nah, it's, it's, it's technically it's chili. Some it's technically chili. It's Greek chili. <laughs> All right, do you realize it's tolerance to hydrate? Hydrate. My, my vaccine brew. <laughs> What's up, Rally Panda? Thanks for joining. Good games. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, anyway, you guys, yeah. any, are you doing any good food stuff, Tom? Um, no, actually, uh, except I had a, a ham and Swiss, except the ham, I put too much on it. And then the Swiss didn't really melt and the bread was already super toasted and starting to get like that almost burnt part. Like, a really good grilled cheese, so right before it tips over the edge into burnt, so I had to take it off, and it was kind of disappointing. But that's literally it. <laughs> oh, and right. uh, margaritas, and I, I have limes now, so. Yeah, we, we didn't get limes with our Corona, so I honestly never really did that until Dobby was out last summer. Um, He got me into the idea of actually putting the lime in the Corona, and damn, that makes a difference. That yeah. actually makes a pretty big difference. <laughs> I cannot have a, a Corona without a lime in it. And it's it's a completely different beer. I like, I actually so dislike Corona without lime. Ah, I'm not that yeah. far. But... Oh, I so, think um, I did... lime in oh, general yeah. is the superior citrus fruit. Yeah, agreed. We, yeah. we actually, uh, Renee and I had that conversation today. We're, we're grabbing fruit. And I'm like, oh, we got to get some limes. And she's like, well, do you want lemons? I said, no, fuck lemons. All my homies <laughs> eat limes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Lovely. Yeah, that. <laughs> Either way. So I think at this point, it's safely to say uh, games. Games? Y'all playing? I'm playing play one right now. It. Yeah. I've actually played a lot of Rocket League this last week. I did too. Got um Adam, you should sh uh, go in reverse real quick to show that uh, skin off. On oh, look at this! Already. Look at that! Oh, Rock adap a dapper oh. gentleman. Maybe I'll just play this whole match backwards. Oh, <laughs> you know, Rocket League makes me think of something. So a few casts ago, <laughs> Super Bowl. I, no. When I was uh, casting at Adams, I bitched about the top of my thumb stick came off. Well, um went into Microsoft and tried to get a replacement because, you know, this is a, um, it's one of the lab controllers. Gina custom made it for me. It's kind of nice. I liked it. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do one again, you know, get in my cart, go to check out air on their side, air on their side. I work with the technician for like an hour. I can't figure it out. At one point it was when I was trying to add my credit card. He's like, you know what you could do is just buy gift cards and use those. And I just, I told him straight, I'm like, dude, that is shady. He's like, yeah, let's see if we can find something else. <laughs> the Microsoft rep told me to buy gift cards and use that. Oh my God. Are you sure like, he was a like Microsoft a, rep? Uh, yeah. Like, I did, feel did like I'm on a Kip Boga stream. <laughs> it, well, yeah, it was their support chat. Oh my yeah, God. Uh, yeah. Did did he uh, ask you to send him the gift card so he could plug him in for you? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That is it's actually the more efficient way because the issues with the system, so he can do it himself for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, just just as verification, Western Union him uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks just just in case. Yeah. He can use that to, to buy the controller. Well, um, I couldn't get it to work that night. They couldn't fix it. Um, he had me debugging things on my side, even though the air said it was on their end. Mm -hmm. Um, so eventually, like two days later, I tried again, and was able to finally get it. So I have a new controller in August, finally. Wait, nice. Hey, so hopefully, good. stop sucking at Rocket League. Yeah, I'll still well, suck. Once that new controller comes in, though, you're gonna have like a week or two window to be like, oh no, I just messed up because that's a new controller. I'm getting used to it, breaking it in. Yeah, but after that, dude, you you're out really of excuses. That. You're gonna have to. I have to find another excuse. Yeah, you have to yeah. 
do something about well, that. Well, luckily, my uh, I think my modem is getting a little old, so I guess oh, okay, yeah, like every once in a sure. while. Oh no, it was the puppy. The the puppy was barking, and I, I got distracted. My monitor oh, was right. off. Yeah. It was my little brother playing. Controller's not even plugged in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of the above. <laughs> Tom, Tom's worked the game in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oops. The clear bottles, which allows sun to skunk it. The lime tries to make it better. Just drink better beer. Wow. <laughs> okay, someone's strong against strong corona against here. Corona. I I cannot blame and, you and for not being the, uh, strong against Corona. <laughs> and not the virus, the beer. By the way, yeah. yeah, adding adding lime to coronavirus actually doesn't do anything. Just uh, letting you know, just other than makes it tastier. Yeah, yeah, or worse, depending on your taste palate. Yeah, but hey, if you don't like limes, I mean, come on, I don't know if I can associate with you. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did a good bit of Rocket League this week too. Finally, I, I enjoyed that. Did you get that, rank, get that ranked grind, grind in? Up. Yeah, I was already at my rewards I'm going to get, so it was just grinding to grind. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I can't be bothered but to make the, the push. Something I did make progress on, fucking Tarkov. Hey, yeah. Uh, ran some Tarkov with Adam and Rob, and a newcomer. We got Dobby in on the mix now. Oh, All right. He was so, um, uh, very confused, as he should have been. As you first start That's Tarkov, awesome, Tarkov. <laughs> there is a so, lot all at once at Tark with Tarkov. So huge erection um, <laughs> actually did a really, really good um, analogy because Scott was talking about like it was a whole lot. He's like, yeah, it's like drinking from a fucking fire hi or fire hose. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because oh. like there's so much stuff going on in that game. <laughs> like you can't. And like he said, when he was playing with us, because we move pretty quick, we know the maps. Mm -hmm. He's like, I did couldn't understand what was going on. I was just following people to random spots for no reason. Yeah. Yep. We we could have done I a better job do walking him through stuff too, yeah. though. I think. Yeah, I mean, to a degree, I. I, I, I really I, wish we, we that could you could have. do multiplayer offline mode. I yes, that would help a lot. Mm -hmm. That would be perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> but for some reason, they don't allow that. So. Yeah. Sorry, that's coming through. The dogs are having fun. It's coming through, but you know, <laughs> they're adorable, so it's okay. Ah. So yeah, I, we uh, we did I make a lot the... of. Go ahead. Oh no no, go for it. I was just saying. I've got just no re... off. I was just re reiterating that we did make a lot of progress. I think I jumped like five levels the past couple of days, just doing a bunch of tasks and stuff. Yeah, my, my level's starting to drop, or drop, jump, finally. I hope it's bit. not dropping. You've got <laughs> that some would bugs. That a really weird bug. Really uh, trying to get to that uh, flea market. Need that flea market. That's when the game starts, man. That's when the mm. game starts. I, uh, I played a little bit more League of Legends. Um, and I still I still don't <laughs> hate it. Like I, I hate the complete community, but I don't hate the game. Um, it's really well made. The the microtransactions everywhere is a little bit annoying, um, but it's not. I don't feel like it's held me back from playing. Like at least at least right now at the very low levels, I haven't ever felt like oh shit now I need to buy this guy because he's the only way I could win this match, or I need to buy this guy this guy because it's the only way to hard counter this meta, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's been uh, interesting, Irk. We should. We should play that. I think it would be a nice compare and contrast with Dota. I don't know if I'm going to stick on it, but um, it's fun to play something like in the MOBA vein that's not Dota 2. It's it's a little bit uh, it's, it's a little bit. I'm different. I'm turned the... off by having to buy characters. I, so the at least the currency in the initial levels, I have earned enough of it just by playing like a minimum of matches to really get whoever i want um like it's not it doesn't at all feel like rainbow six at all <laughs> um it, like rainbow six you will grind for weeks to unlock somebody um but the uh yeah with with league the heroes are relatively cheap within game currency um yeah it's it's not too bad um and let's say you fucking hate the game and that buying heroes turns you off completely you can just leave and go to dota 
yeah, it's probably worth trying. But I mean, I'll I'll play a match or two with you. Just to do it. But yeah. I'm I'm really turned off by the idea that there's heroes behind paywall, which is weird I, because I like yeah. Rainbow Six. Mm -hmm. I was too. Um, the the mode I've been playing the most of is Aram, which is not the official like Dota two style standard MOBA. It is literally one lane, five v five on one lane, and you're just pushing, and it's all random. Both teams are completely randomized. Um, and it doesn't pick from the uh, the heroes that you have unlocked. It literally gives you the entire thing. So it's a great way if you play a lot of ARAM, you can say, oh shit, I was wrecking house with this dude. He really fits my play style. I really like this guy. And then go buy him afterwards. So it's a nice way to get a real trial of a hero without needing to buy it first. Hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no um it's it's whatever I'll, I'll try it sometime with you i mean i'm now nothing it's fucking free right yeah exactly you're you're out i think seven gigs it's a really tiny download too that's not bad that's not bad at all <laughs> it's only yeah. seven gigs it's something really small because the game is still designed to work on fucking everything it's not like call of duty fucking 200 gigs of a game uh it is it is relatively tiny and will run on everything you know i was just because like dota 2 is actually not small no ever since they switched to the source 2 engine yeah yeah no but, league league doesn't it's not as pretty as dota but i almost feel like the um the art direction and because it is more simplified is a little bit clearer to read what's going on during a match it's also a little bit more cartoony and less um, realistic is the wrong word. It's less high fidelity. It's lower fidelity than Dota 2. It's less dingy. Dota 2's yeah. got a dinginess to it. Like in, yeah. in a high quality way. In, in a modern game kind of way. League looks like a cartoon. Is Scott saying that the items look like trash? It's hard to see what you have. In um. League? Yeah, but that's not so much of a problem, at least at the at the very low levels that I have played, and I am probably wrong here, the items are not usable. Um, it's literally just stat boosts. So you build things just like you do in Dota, except it just goes to boost your stats and attack speed and damage output and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so like, I you don't need to see Helm of the, or you don't need to see Mask of Madness, because you're never going to toggle, you're never going to hit that button, because they don't do anything. Right, the only consumables are like health potions and shit like that. I had a buddy who was kind of raging on your analysis. It's like he left off the point that League is not an item-based game; it's a hero skill game, where yeah. Dota is an item game. Yeah, yeah, and that's absolutely true. Like Dota, if you if you fuck up your items, if you fuck out your fuck up your loadout, you could be completely fucked. Right, you could have wasted a bunch of time and money on that hero when. If you're the, the lead carry, you just threw. Congratulations. Um, in League, it's way more about, you know, what am I leveling up first and how am I using this with my team? It's it's a lot more uh, straightforward. Hmm. Well. Hmm. What Indeed. else? <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Um, I, I launched Siege with full intention of like playing it. And then I just remembered what solo queuing siege is like. Oh, and yeah. yeah. So I basically, I set up the new operators because when the new season happened, I was like, okay, I'll buy the season pass because I'd like to get into rainbow again. And these new operators look cool. Two seasons later, I have these operators and I have yet to really play them. So I was like, all right, well, I'll at least get them like set up and stuff. And then I know Scott bought, uh, R6, and there's been a little bit of interest in getting back into it a little bit. So I set up my operators a little bit. I've got some skins from like the Twitch Prime drops, which are really cool looking actually for a handful of the operators. So I set They're those not just up. Straight purple. Um, no, actually, they look kind of like. Uh, okay. They're like uh, dark uniforms with bright, uh, like sky blue trim, kind of like Tron. It's really cool looking. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh. My biggest issue with Twitch drops is like everything you would get in PUBG or, or most other games was just bright 
fucking purple. Like, <laughs> I, we know it's from Twitch. Thank you. Give me something I will actually use. Yeah. No. So I love the Twitch drop for Rocket League, but I have to have it off because if I use it on a cast, it is blinding to anyone watching. <laughs> Which one? Oh, the tactical nuke one? <laughs> yes. I fucking love the tact mm-hmm. nuke. But um, but, so I, yeah. I didn't really play any online matches. I did a couple of the... Uh, it used to be called Terrorist Hunt, but they just switched it to something else. I can't remember what they call it now. But I did a couple of those. Uh, the new operators seem really cool. One thing I did like, I noticed when I was doing my character customization stuff, I didn't. I don't know when they added this, but you can actually change the color of all your attachments now, too. Oh, to like, neat. To like That's actually, uh, So it's not like super in-depth customization, but you've got basically the whatever the original one was. You've got like, uh, like painted black or tan or gray. So you can switch between those to make them look a little more in tune with whatever weapon skins and stuff you have on. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. a nice touch. Yeah, it's really nice. It makes a big difference. And it makes the guns I look wish... cleaner because a lot of the like the regular attachments not colored or anything. Like the ACOG might be black, but it's got like scratches and wear on it, like visible wear. Whereas if you use like the black attachment skin, it's really smooth and like brand new looking. Yeah. It's nice. So there's a new game mode actually for Rainbow Six, isn't there? Yeah. Um, uh, what did they call it? Was it attrition? Oh was yeah. It, uh, so they've been the doing a lot attrition. more. They've been doing a lot more event modes and stuff lately. It seems like. But this one seems really cool. It's basically just regular Rainbow Six, but um, to whoever wins the the previous match, all the operators on that team are banned for the following match. Oh, is it just the following match or the rest of the match? I mean, I think it's the rest of the match. I don't know. Either way, Either that's way, kind that, of a cool that's idea. That's cool. Yes. Ooh. Like for someone like me, I run a shit ton of Mira. Mm-hmm. Once Mira's gone, fuck, I got to use someone else. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to force you to learn the other heroes or damn operators. It, operators. Heroes, heroes, agents, operators, operators and, yeah. characters, <laughs> champions. Yeah. Champions. What are the other ones? Can we do something like the IEEE and say there's a new fucking standard when there is someone we chose? <laughs> it is just called a fucking character. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. You can call it whatever you want to call it, I guess. It's it's all flavor text. Cars. It's all flavor text. Yes, yes, it is. But it's annoying. I um was running a little more Slay the Spire. And I will say that game is just like the perfect before bed. I think I've said it before. Mm-hmm. But as I wanted to ask you guys, because while I was playing it, I had a revelation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was laying in bed, had my Slay the Spire going, TV's on. And um, of course, on it, I have something on. It's Bob's Burgers. Love Bob's Burgers. Great show. And I'm starting to think, like, man, this might be my favorite adult, like, adult cartoon. And it's Don. I'm like, that might be blasphemous. Like, what are your guys' like go to like adult cartoon if you can only have one that you're gonna watch? Ooh. Like, we're not doing the rest of your life thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just, just in general, like right now, if you said I'm you're watching one show tonight and it's an adult cartoon, what are you watching? Futurama. Really? Still. Probably. Nice. Um, I like it. I like it better than Rick and Morty. It's more oh. clever than Rick and Morty. Either um, like Futurama or I don't know, King of the Hill. Gina loves King of the Hill. Like that, that is by far hers. Um, Skies is in here calling out Big Mouth, and that is a Ooh, new show. Up? I wouldn't say it yet, but it is excellent. It's a YouTube show about uh, like middle school kids going through puberty, and it's done Netflix in a show. non. It, it's a great, non great show. Huh? I did I say YouTube? You did say YouTube. Sorry, Netflix. It's a Netflix show. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 a good it's a good call for it. But I think mine would be Bob's Burgers. <sighs> this is hard Love for Bob me Burgers. because you got to throw Archer in there too. Archer is fucking great. Ooh, I forgot. I found the Archer is more enjoyable watching with people. Watching alone, it is not as enjoyable of a show. Um, I enjoy Archer alone. Like I don't, I don't watch it all the time, right? It's not like my favorite show, but I, I think it's solid. 
So my first exposure to Archer was my fourth year of college with Kip and all them. And we're all just like laying around, you're sitting around, eating, drinking, whatever, and watching and having a great time. Mm. Then all of a sudden, you know, a couple years later, I'm like, you know, I want to watch it again. Started watching it again by myself. I was like, eh, it's okay. Like, I instantly put it below, like, American Dad, uh, Family Guy. Like, instantly a notch really? below that if I'm watching it alone. I have always hated Family Guy. I know some people love it, but it just, it, I don't know, it seems low effort to me most of the time. Like, sometimes they've got really good skits or gags or jokes, but the majority of the time, I'm just not into it. That's fair. I, I mean, I dig it, but it's not, I don't even think it's his best show. No, no, not by far. I, I, I would put American Dad above Family Guy, but in my head, they're mostly the same show regardless. I don't think they are. I think that there's actually a different feel to American Dad. But I, I also enjoy American Dad much more than Family Guy. Um, you know, I, I think I'm with you. I think Bob's Burgers is the one I'd have to pick with with uh, Futurama a very close second. Because I could rewatch Futurama for years. And I Ooh. do. Mm -hmm. Dobby in here with the strong one. This one is up in there for Aqua me team. as well. With Aqua, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> yeah. The pr the problem with Aqua Teen, it's it's a volume hitter where you you have probably four or five episodes of that that I put in like some of the best television I've ever watched. Yeah. You also have ten episodes of that that might have been some of the worst television I've ever watched. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> absolutely. Um, like it's it, absolutely it, a volume show. It's also is a. Uh, is also calling out, you know, if we're not including anime. If we are including anime, mine is easy. Cowboy Bebop, all-time show of the year. Oh, yeah, I'm not counting anime. I mean, like, the, the, I say, like, adult cartoons, like, in the Family Guy vein. Yeah, American adult cartoons. Yeah. Did you Have you guys seen BoJack Horseman? I watched I've a couple of the first. Yeah, I've seen the first, like, four or five. I heard that and that honestly, show was really, really good and that it gets way better as it goes, but... I never did mm. actually give it a fair chance. The, the thing I have... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> the thing I've heard the, the most about it is that, like, the show is really good and it's excellent, but it is just fucking depressing all the time. Uh, because BoJack is just that. not, like... I, I, apparently, the, the character is, like, not a good person at all. Not somebody to look up to. Bad things happen to them. It's their fault. You know, they're they're creating their own personal hell. Uh, and it just keeps getting getting worse. Like the Bojack's entire life circles the toilet drain. And you get to watch that for like nine seasons. Nice. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's I, started watch I haven't seen a lot of it. I started watching, or I shouldn't say started, a while ago I started watching F is for Family. It's uh, Bill Burr's show. Oh, yeah. I think I saw that's, a couple episodes of that. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It you could definitely tell it's a him show because it is it reeks of his type of comedy. Like the angry, self-deprecating kind of guy. <laughs> ah, I love him. But yeah, um if I, I will say again though, Daria, god damn it, Scott. No. <laughs> um anyone I, who okay, has where do you guys rate King of the Hill? Like I think it's fine. It was the Definitely biggest not my misfit. favorite. I think it's underrated. Biggest misfit to ever be on Adult Swim. It had no business being on Adult Swim. I'll agree with that. I love that show. It had no business being there. It was actually like a morally righteous show, which doesn't fit anything Adult Swim does. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I can't argue that. No, I, I really like it. Like, it's probably top five adult cartoon for me. Dale Gribble is my spirit animal. Yeah. <laughs> Dale Gribble moments make that show. <laughs> I think it kind of does, yeah. Pocket sand! Pocket sand! <laughs> now, I, Scott brought up Daria. I remember as a kid watching Daria, but I don't think I've watched Daria in like two decades. I don't. I remember watching it. I don't remember a single thing about it. I remember her being like very, um, or uh, I almost said empathetic, uh, just like void of emotion. Yeah. As I was say, the character of Daria reminded me of probably four or five people I went to high school with. So so you lived it, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't need to watch the show. Good. Good. 
Yeah, that was uh, MTV era where I think they ended oh, up. Fuck. They brought in uh, Ren and Stimpy, if I remember right, after Nickelodeon dropped it. Um. All right, Dobby. Dobby dropping bombs out here. Metalocalypse. Ooh, I forgot about that oh, show. Man. It's so good. I should have watched that show more than I did. Cocaine. So I'm gonna say. And yes, uh, Eli, I think Robot Chicken would count. Same with Moral Oral. Yeah, I would, I, Robot Chicken's I, up there for me. I fucking love Robot Chicken. Um, I like Robot Chicken, but Moral Oral is higher on my list. As a complete really? show, okay. Moral Oral was excellent. Okay. I never got into it. But it has you have to stick it through to complete. Um, okay, what one more I'm gonna throw out there to see if you guys have ever watched it. Uh, Breaking Bad, the animated series. Have you guys ever watched Boondocks? Uh, um, yes. A couple episodes. I mean, if you're not comfortable talking about it, that's fine, but I, I enjoy that show. <laughs> I, I like Boondocks. I like Boondocks. I cannot quote anything from that show for very obvious <laughs> reasons, but I do like Boondocks. Uh... <laughs> God damn it, Tom. Okay, with that, I think it's safe to move off topic. Uh, <laughs> so, Tom, do you have any more games you'd like to discuss right now? Uh, I do, and they're not boondocks. <laughs> Thank um, you. Uh, sorry, I'm distracted by chat. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I uh, I played a demo of a new VR game that uh, is trying to move into like a Beat Saber type space. It's called Flow Space, and it basically works the same way. Except that, like, there's a bunch of squares that you hit, but they're a lot smaller, and there's a bunch of them, and it's more like a thing to increase your score. And then there's, like, little trails that you have to follow with your hands and try to be accurate. And it's, um, it's not great. <laughs> um, it's, it's a fine game. There's nothing technically wrong with it. But when you're comparing music games side by side, flow space, you just kind of... You just kind of are there, and the music happens around you. In Beat Saber, you feel like you're a badass making the music happen yourself and smashing those boxes on point, and um, it's way, way more immersive. Um, it actually gets you be, into the zone. Is Flow Space supposed to be more of just like a chill game? No. Oh. I mean, it, they've got some chill songs, but it's you can tell they're definitely aiming for the, the mass market Um you know, music game space. And unfortunately, it just, it didn't do it for me. Okay. Like, with the name of Flow Space, and you're saying, like, the music just kind of happens around you, it made me think maybe it's supposed to be, like, a chill, Tetris effecty kind of thing. Yeah. If, if it was, if they did take that angle and made it more of a, uh, you know, chill out and vibe experience, I probably would have taken to it a little bit more. But from what they're going for, to me, it just felt like, the whole reason, I, or the whole time I'm playing it, I'm thinking... Yeah, I should just play Beat Saber. <laughs> yeah, Beat Saber sounds really fun right now. Man, I wish I were playing Beat Saber. Oh, uh, that's not a good feeling. And to have that's playing it. something. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair, you're gonna have that with a lot. Like, probably one of the only other games I think would hold up against Beat Saber is like Audio Shield. Yeah, it's it's, it's a little different feel, mm -hmm. but it's but it's done in this very same like really well way. Like I played a lot of Audio Shield early VR. Really, I, really. I fun. forgot about that. It was really good because you could just put whatever music you wanted and it was procedurally generated. But that yeah. also means that uh, leaderboards weren't really quite possible. Yeah. But they and were, but they that, weren't tight. It also means that the maps, like, even if you put in, a, you know, a bunch of hours into it, the maps all kind of run together and feel sort of samey and you don't get interesting, unique things out of that, right? It's all, yeah. it's all generated, so it's all going to feel relatively the same. Yeah. And I mean that is a downside of it, but for early VR, that was that was a pretty fucking killer game. Yeah. Yeah, what what amazes me still about Beat Saber, and I did play that this week, of course, um, is that the concept and the gameplay and everything about that is so goddamn trivial and simple. Hey, let's slice boxes in a direction to the beat of a song. Okay, congratulations. Music games were invented 25 years ago. Um, it's but, Fruit Ninja meets Guitar Hero. Yeah, yeah but basically. the execution is so fucking solid that you can't help but put 175 hours into it. 
Sure you can. At least I can't. By not doing it. <laughs> but now your setup's really good. Like you were doing some this week again, and it's, it's just a really good setup. Yeah. Because I, people I really quickly like these drop theory. in, tell you, hey, check out this, this. Bam, 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 bam. Done. Yep. Are you still trying and to play yes, it every I day part- as a form of exercise? Yep. And nice. I have been. Uh, I've taken a couple days off. There was... There's one day when it was a little too hot in my apartment for playing Beat Saber, and I did it anyway. And uh, I might have gotten a little overheated, which wasn't wasn't great for my health. But, you know, it's it's fine. I lived. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did take a day off after that. Uh, but I will be getting back to it tonight. So if you'd like to see me do Beat Saber and you are in the 72-pin connector Discord, I will be there. So tune in. And if you're it's not okay. in the Discord, you should join it. Yes, you should. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What you doing? What are you doing? So, uh, Dobby calls out like he he misses Guitar Hero. I know I played a lot of it. I know Adam did some. Tom. I played I played a lot of it. You had to play a lot because I know I played, for a while I played a lot of two. Okay, I didn't get into three as much as other people did. Tom, did you really do Guitar Hero though? I got into every single Guitar Hero and Rock Band game. Okay, I like. People don't realize this about me because I I will play stuff like fucking Dear Esther and Gone Home and like all the fucking narrative only no gameplay bullshit. But every single goddamn music game I am obsessed with like that. That is my bread and butter. All right. I just because Guitar Hero was a game that I didn't play with a ton of people. So I didn't know like how much you had played or not. Because I know like we all did rock band a little bit. Mm. But I didn't know if like you were just a cash or if you actually like grinded it out to No, to no, I was I was grinding. I bought the the seven the seven the several hundred dollars um like Beatles rock band pack that had all the <laughs> instruments for the 360 and I, I played that for a good long while. I have noise complaints because of that game. <laughs> I feel bad. Kate bought a uh, guitar or rock band world tour or rock or whatever one was world tour and um for the Xbox One. But he didn't have an Xbox One, so now he has oh, the game for an Xbox One. That's because sucks. the Xbox One's with me. I miss Rock Band. Rock Band was a really solid idea. It was a better idea. It was a great growth onto Guitar Hero. Like yeah. it was the next step, and it was done well. Mm-hmm. I wish I would have played it more. I, di- I didn't play Rock Band hardly at all. I maybe Doing tried rock it band once or with twice. Four people with all the controllers. Hey, could mm-hmm. you do five with a microphone? Because you you had you had two guitars, drums, and a and microphone. Then a vocal. That was it. I'd really like to play okay. it now. Actually, now that I have like a decent electronic drum set, it would be so can, fun to do the drum songs on that. Yeah, I was gonna say people mm-hmm. rig those up with those mm-hmm. actual that drum supports it. Yeah, set. it straight up supports it. I think. Yeah, that would be fucking awesome. Uh, Vida oh, calls out. Well, yeah. So was Rocksmith too far then? Um, Rocksmith I was don't... like that was with the actual guitar, wasn't it? Yeah, you plug in actually. You can yeah. plug in any actual guitar and play Rocksmith. No, I think that's really cool, and actually, that's that's a space where I've always wanted music games to go, but it's really hard to pull off. Is yeah. how do you make a music game that teaches people how to play real instruments? And there's like the the tutorialization of that is a hard enough gameplay challenge that hardly anyone should be willing to take it on. Uh, but I think if you could pull it off well, and Rocksmith did okay from what I read, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I I think you you've got money in the bank at that point. So I will say this: um, is I know a lot of people that put a lot of time in Guitar Hero. If you were to put that much time in an actual guitar, you would be an okay guitarist. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit, yeah. people were putting a lot of time yeah. in that. I, like uh, those, and those skills do not transfer. Like, okay, no, you no, can kind no. of just double Not strong. even a little bit. And that's not even close to what it really so, is. However, so if you play guitar, that absolutely transfers to Guitar Hero. Yes. It's a one-way there, street. One it's a one-way street. In music games that will translate um and that is yeah recognizing timing mm-hmm. but guitar hero t- okay it matters on what kind of stuff you're doing too yeah like guitar hero timing is super straightforward timing. yeah like there's nothing complex about what guitar hero does 
Mm. And with reason, like that's not their. Well, base. it depends on the song. <laughs> like, did they have any tool packs? I mean, that would probably. Oh, never mind. They did have a Periphery one in uh, uh, Dr. Oh, Tarp they, Hero. Did they really? The other one. Yeah, Periphery had a pack in uh, Rock Band, I think. Oh. Because Butter Snips was in it. Nice. Yeah, that would have been fun. That that one would have been timing hell. Oh, I fucked that up. But yeah, um, I, I have my guitar here now. Oh, I don't know if I said that. Yeah, my guitar is finally back in Seattle with me. So I might see about getting Rocksmith to try it out to see what it's about. That'd be cool. So yeah, my dad actually has Rocksmith. He was going to learn to play guitar, and he was using Rocksmith as a way to do so. Have you Ooh. tried it out, Adam? No, I, I never. Mean, I never. I never did stupid. try it out. I was just saying, because you're a super good guitarist, so it'd be really cool to see your input on. Like, I am like a mediocre. Uh, I can play Beat Saber. Well, no, I'm just talking like to go jump into Rocksmith and see like the idea of Rocksmith is to teach you how to play. How well does that actually translate from a game to being able to play? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I like. Do they let now. you get by on super sloppy shit, or does that have to be super it would have crisp to. and clean? I mean, but you yeah. have to because um, there's no way to learn in real time. You should that be able to hear like when you're fucking up, right? It's not like Guitar Hero when you miss a note and it gets, does that clang. Like, <laughs> if you fuck up, you know, a, a section on an actual guitar, you can hear yourself fucking up. But you don't need so much- a computer to tell you that. No, no, yeah, you kind of Sometimes you, it, sometimes you can't tell in the moment when you're playing. Like, you're focusing too guitar, much. there's a huge gray area. Like, there's six strings on that some bitch. Sometimes mm. you're only supposed to hit one. You might brush a second one, so there's a slight hum going on that you might not even notice, but okay. other people might. Got it. Or like timings and stuff are weird too sometimes. But yeah. Either way, that that's a hell of a rabbit hole. Uh, Tom, <laughs> talk about a game yeah. that wasn't rhythm based. Oh fuck! Uh, Here, I'll I'll, I'll uh... cue you up on something. <laughs> uh, so there was something you streamed about Half Life, Alex. I am not clear about what the fuck you did or what it was. Yeah. Uh, so, um, are you guys familiar with Portal Two? Portal Two is Portal one what? of the best games of all time. <laughs> okay, Let's make it sure. Are you familiar with the final hours of Portal Two? Not like the last gameplay hours, but the title called The Final Hours of Portal 2. No. No. So, Jeff Keighley, um, the uh, host of the Game Awards, the Dorito Pope, the man himself. The Dorito um, Pope? These... What? That's, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting demoed by Windows 98. It's, this is like being in IT all over again. Um, but anyway, so uh, The Final Hours of Portal 2 uh, is a project... Uh, by Jeff Keighley, and he has done a lot of these, the final hours of XYZ. Um, They are tiny little documentary series dealing, like, the inner workings, the development, the making of various games that he likes. Uh, The first one he did was on Half-Life, where he emailed Gabe and said, hey, you guys are putting out a game, I'd like to get into games journalism, can I just hang out and, you know, check stuff out? They're like, yeah, Uh, bring a camera, bring bring a tape recorder. Like, just come on down. Uh, Valve was a really tiny company back then. Um, And he did this documentary series, uh, basically a giant series of interviews and everything else, chronicling the final hours of the development of Half-Life. And that has turned into this massive making of series that he uh, he makes on relatively few games, basically games that he personally loves. Um, So the final... Hmm? So far, you've t- you've named Valve games. I'm like, he has his access for Valve, and that's Titanfall. it. He, okay. He's done Titanfall too. Um, I need to look at what else he did. They actually got pretty far into Bioshock Infinite, um, but that was shut down uh, for a variety of reasons that he could not legally go into. Um, so there's there's a lot of games that he does this too. Um, but the final hours of Portal Two was this cool little interactive storybook giant it's it's quite literally a book but with a bunch of little interactive elements a bunch of slideshows a bunch of pictures models you can interact with beta footage videos um and this came out for half-life alex um so it's cool like learning about how a game is made like the stuff that they tried the stuff that didn't work the stuff that got left on the cutting room floor it's all kind of well and good 
But the more important thing that this game chronicles is the last 10 years of Valve software. All their hardware projects, all the canceled shit, exactly why they haven't put out goddamn anything except shitty card games for the past 10 years. Oh, is this yeah, what... He, is this where everyone's getting like the information that hey, there was a Left 4 Dead three and it was canceled? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Exactly. Um, all all of those those exposés that you're seeing on IGN, on VentureBeat, on everything, you know, oh, Valve had five different projects named Half Life three or set in the Half Life universe. That is from this expose, um, which it's calling it an expose is probably probably bad. That implies some things, but it comes from this Valve sanctioned uh, you know interactive storybook. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, the, uh, the Valve Index was not their first try at their own headset. After they worked with HTC, they said, well, hey, let's go crazy. Let's see what we can do. Um, and they created this headset that would have cost $5,000 per, uh, per unit <laughs> to ship. Uh -huh. And they Lord. said, yeah, they, it was called Vader. Apparently, they, they're keeping a lot of things under wraps that it could do, but it is quite literally uh, one of the most expensive or the most expensive VR headset in the consumer space you could possibly imagine. So they shelved that, and they took some of the stuff that worked and some of the stuff that was cheap and shoved it into the index, namely the uh, off-ear audio system. Yeah, that, that's, that was an interesting move. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense, but it was something I would have never thought about doing. But that's really not so. A five thousand dollar VR headset. There are pictures. There are pictures. You can Ooh. actually see how they prototype this thing. Uh, and it's Valve is absolutely uh, subscribing to the hacker ethos. You can see like rough three D printed parts with fucking breadboards and wires coming out everywhere, and it's it's really like shitty looking, but in a cool cyberpunk way. Um, nice. Yeah, it's it's really neat. Um, one of the things uh, that they did is they hired a uh, an audio engineer to go and try to build a new audio system, where where this off ear stuff came from, and she wanted to see if it would actually work. So her little demo was she took apart some computer speakers, uh, screwed them into a skateboarding helmet, and then tested with that, <laughs> like super <laughs> shitty hacked together stuff. Uh, and that became the off-ear audio system of Vader and now the Index, uh, which is really cool. You get to see, like, the entire hardware prototype of these are literally just a, you know, a um, Steam controller with some extra shit attached to it um, to here's some 3D printed parts that are clearly, you know, rubber banded to winter gloves to the eventual Knuckles controllers we got. Um, it's a really, really cool look into Valve software over the past decade. And there's a lot of information in there. Um, now, if, uh, if you have not played Half-Life Alex, if you're avoiding spoilers, do not pick this up. It's 10 bucks. It's on Steam. Don't pick it up. It actually goes into story spoilers massively. So play through the oh, game first, okay. then get this thing. So just okay. throwing it out there. You got me yeah, excited about some I... cool thing to watch, and now I can't watch it. Yeah, well, it's it's less watching and more reading. It is 15 chapters of mostly text. There's a bunch of videos. There's a bunch of interactive segments. There's a bunch of um, soundboards uh, where you can make your own head crab sounds, uh, which is really cool, um, and interactive models and animations. Um, like it is, it's a really cool project, and I kind of feel bad for only paying 10 bucks for this thing. Okay, um, so here it is. Let's... It's great. How about you give us some of the deets that people are interested in that might be afraid of spoilers? Okay. Name some so, of the big marquee games that have been canceled that people might not know. They were building existed. a Minecraft competitor that eventually Real. moved to VR. It was called Artie, and uh, it looks like it got shelved or you know got put on hold for Alex. I don't know if it's coming out. They were working on an RPG. Um, they were inspired by Skyrim and Dark Souls um, and like the storytelling of Baldur's Gate. Uh, they, they were inspired by a lot of these things and then went to see, okay, can we create a really cool RPG? And so they, they've run some experiments. There is a hidden project that they asked Jeff Keighley to not talk about, so he didn't. Um, and, that means yeah, it's still ongoing, I would assume. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there are five different Half-Life 3 slash Episode 3 games that they have tried to launch 
and killed for a wide variety of reasons. Um, most of the reasons they killed those projects is because the Source 2 engine just wasn't ready. Um, they actually killed those projects because the tech just wasn't there. Um, even when starting Half-Life Alex, it was actually just going to be like a little shitty thing with Half-Life 2 models that, that might have been up one day. Like they, they weren't planning on this being anything big. And then the scope just kind of exploded, uh, which happens to every great product. Mm-hmm. Um, but this exploded but, in a good way. Yeah, Not exactly. Not cluster bomb. Yeah, and what's what's funny is that the uh, the story was actually a massive pile of shit. Like people people rated the interactivity, the the graphics, the audio fidelity. Like playtest showed that people loved Half Life Alex. It was easily the very best Half Life game they had ever played on every mark, except story, where it was clearly the worst and worse than a lot of games. Um, like one one story had like some COD esque revenge plot super dark dealing with a lot of torture and bullshit and it, it just it's not half-life it is not half-life half-life tends to be goofier than that um and like six months before the game came out they actually hired back some writers uh, who had left because valve hadn't shipped fucking anything in nine years and they hired these writers back and they said please please fix this help us and uh, somebody came up with the idea. I'm not going to go into spoilers, but they came up with the idea that eventually became the story in an elevator conversation. Like one of the writers was like, man, I don't know. Like we can't tie this thing together. This end level, like I, it, it's just not working. We can't find anything. And the other guy's just like, well, why don't you just do this, man? We're like, holy fuck. Can we, <laughs> can we do that? Ho- we can we can do that. And it became the story of Half-Life Alex. And after those story beats were changed, um, the story hit uh, the highest mark uh, of any Half-Life game in playtesting for, for story design. Nice. Which was really cool. The only I know is out of all of that, what made me really, really sad is they killed off Left 4 Dead 3. Um, kind of, but not really. Um, so the development strings of Left 4 Dead 3 uh, are still, they're still in the Source 2 engine. Stuff is still happening. Stuff is still being worked on. Um, the, there are tons of leaks out about Left 4 Dead and having a, uh, a possible VR tie-in. Um, so yeah, they're, they're working on a bunch of stuff. Uh, what got me really excited and really what got the fans really excited is that at the end of this documentary, you know, not getting into spoilers again, um, you know, people at Valve said, yeah, we're, Alex showed us that we could do Half-Life. We're no longer afraid of this thing. Because if if you have a game with kind of the, the anticipated quality of Half-Life 3, how do you even begin to meet that? Like, how on earth do you begin to create something that is not going to piss off your entire fan base? And everyone was just too afraid to touch it. Like, how do you, how do you eat that elephant? Uh, it turns out with Alex, the, the answer was one bite at a time over four years. They were um, afraid of pulling a micro or a bungee with Halo. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because, you know, Halo set a really fucking high bar. How do you do better than that? And it turns out, yeah, it's really fucking hard, especially <laughs> yeah. when you're on a deadline. Um, but uh, at the end of the documentary, people said, yeah, uh, we're not afraid of Half-Life anymore. We, we can do this. There's, there's more coming out. Um, you know, when, where, how, what it deals with, is it VR? Is it flat screen? No Will it information be whatsoever. Years? <laughs> yeah, no information whatsoever. Uh, but as of right now, Valve is back in the business of Half Life, and I could not be more excited. There won't be another Half Life game released while consoles are a thing. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Uh, I would not be surprised if we heard something in the next three years. I'm not going to give it any sooner than three years. This is still Valve we're talking about. Um, but they still do have some games on, um, you know, under their belt that they're working on right now that they haven't shared anything about. Um, and, and of course, Artifact is being re-released, so don't worry, guys. God, we have yeah. Artifact to tide us over. Did he have anything about Artifact in there? No. Uh, well, okay, a little bit. Um, Valve was actually getting kind of worried because they had gone from being like a super prolific game developer that never really had a flop to they released Artifact and people fucking hated it. And they're like, shit, what did we, 
what did we do? This should have been fine. Because they do play testing a lot, and they just... Yeah, they, they were blindsided. They fully admit that it was a failure, and that's why they pulled it back. Diaz is asking, what about Ricochet? Um, so, Gabe was actually asked. The, uh, there's a reporter that came up and said, hey, um, Gabe, I want to talk to you about an unreleased game. He said, no, I have nothing to say about half... And they're like, Ricochet 2, when's it happening? And uh, Gabe said, oh, okay. Well, the funny thing about releasing Ricochet 2 is that people have a lot of these lofty expectations and we're afraid we can't hit them without something really big in the market. Um, which it was literally an allusion to Half-Life uh, 3. Um, Gabe was super jealous of Nintendo because they developed Mario 64 alongside the Nintendo 64. So the controls, the gameplay, everything was super tied together. In the PC space, they're pretty much at the whim of everyone else, which is why in 2012, they release a job posting that says we are unsatisfied with the, the rate of innovation in the PC hardware landscape. We're hiring people for this now, um, which is exactly where the Valve Index, Vader, their VR projects, their AR projects, all that stuff came from, uh, was this giant hardware lab uh, being built out in Valve software. But that makes sense when you're talking dedicated hardware for your dedicated device, but not PCs as a whole. Like, are they planning on getting into like processors, GPUs? No, they're, they're, it looks like the stuff that they were trying to get into was a lot of AR stuff, which looked really cool. Um, they were going to have a, um, a mode um, of, and this, this isn't officially confirmed. It's just confirmed through, um, people who have since been fired from Valve because they shuttered the, the AR projects uh, and the entire AR staff was shit canned. Um, but they basically had something where uh, a family's coffee table, you would have somebody in VR playing Left 4 Dead while uh, your family out with the coffee table with their AR glasses would actually act like the game director and put down health packs and zombies and super zombies and like, you know, put stuff down on a virtualized level that would rise out from their coffee table. It's really, really cool shit that they were working on. And it got to a playable state. It wasn't polished, but it worked, which is incredible to me. Um, but they've, they've since doubled down on VR and they're no longer looking at AR technology at all. Well, you don't need AR for that to be fun. The idea, I love games with an overlord. Like uh, Natural Selection 2 has some of that. Yep. Oh, okay. I fucking yeah. love that feel, and not games but, don't do it. Yeah, I forgot about Natural Selection too. Yeah, Adam, I think you and I were the only two out of our group that actually enjoyed that game. Yeah, I, I played a so. lot of that, or a lot of Natural Selection back in the day. Well, I think Adam and I, I both it was a Half Life mod. Adam and I both bought uh, what's it called packs, and we got people playing it. Like this was back in like 2011, 12 ish, I think. Mm -hmm. And people were bouncing off of it. We're like, Adam and I are like, damn it, we're loving this. Yeah. No one's here to play it. <laughs> I love asymmetrical multiplayer. But I understand yeah. that as a developer, it would be a nightmare to balance. Yeah. Like, like props to any any of those games that are actually well done. Because that's, that's a feat for sure. Well, and like with that one you had for the human side, the director that would sit in the commander chair that would be able to drop health packs to players that are out in the field or be mm. able to build like way stations in certain areas mm -hmm. almost... it's like that guy that guy's playing an rts yeah while the rest of the team is playing a first person shooter yeah it was super fucking cool um in this uh in this interactive storybook documentary thing um they do show off exactly the first demo of half-life alex internal to valve where they were trying to because Valve works weird. If, if you don't know anything about Valve, Valve is a really weird company. Um, there are no managers. There's nobody saying you have to work on this thing. Instead, the company basically drives itself. You can look at Valve in one of two ways. Either you have one boss and his name is Gabe, or you don't have any boss and it's especially not Gabe. Um, because there, there are things that, uh, that Valve employees have done that Gabe just said, nah, this is a bad idea. Don't do it. And they're like, fuck you, man. We're going to do it. And they have. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, but 
basically you have to convince your teammates you have to convince your fellow employees that this idea this thing you're working on is good enough to be a full game it's good enough to demand their attention um which is good and bad it's good because you have to have a really good or um attractive idea to be able to pull the the developers you need to pull something off the bad is that even if you've got a decent idea if people don't want to work on it it's just not going to happen like it's dead and it that's what valve has done for the past nine years mm -hmm. their ideas just kept falling flat and they couldn't ever get people on it um but the first demo of half-life alex was literally assets from half-life 2 in vr with a like a comically large key to unlock some puzzles like it's literally <laughs> this big inside of vr um <laughs> but it it was like the least polished shit i have ever seen it was just like some guy's shitty mod of a half-life 2 level but in vr and just that experience alone was compelling enough to build the initial half-life alex team it, it proved to everyone that hey look this gameplay idea it's not just hey we want to do half-life because it's got the name half-life it's hey guys we want to do half-life because this shit already works we have literally done no work at all trying to make this thing fun and people are already enjoying it so it's it's really cool stuff. to see that stuff that's cool so okay that wasn't a game that sounds no. like it was more like a documentary docu readery yeah um so have you any other games i did play i finished uh half-life alex for the third time uh <laughs> again playing on hard difficulty um i've got two things one i've got three things one how the fuck does this game keep scaring me it's the third fucking time <laughs> um every jump scare still fucking gets me i know they're there i know they're coming still still freaking me out um two i keep finding things in this game that i hadn't found before like little secret areas secret paths secret gameplay mechanics that i can't really go into because it's a gameplay spoiler but jesus fucking christ only half-life alex only this game with only this hardware can work this way um i was goddamn blown away Irk, i don't know if you saw that video um or if you yeah. avoided it for spoiler reasons no, but... I, I saw it. are you talking the uh i'll just say crawl yeah yeah uh, um jesus i saw that fucking christ <laughs> um cannot believe it, it has taken me three playthroughs to find that um what sucks about that though is that if you, if you don't have rooms enough space in your room yeah you can't do it yeah but that's fine because the stuff you're getting is 100 percent optional right it is it is a tiny bonus for for some people um, now something i was curious about that you didn't try to do there was room to stand there i did stand yes you can't see it on the camera because i was off camera but yes i did stand okay. well i mean like were you able to get high enough to look into the next vent area no no it's it's like uh probably two two feet above me so i tried to back up but you can't really back up because you're to I, try, again spoiling try things jumping I uh, I didn't because I was in a corner with cables wrapped around my legs. <laughs> what? So, no, what could, possi what could possibly not. go wrong there? Because you need a guy on the side, like, okay, bring it over, bring the chair, bring the chair. And you get the <laughs> yes. chair, you stand up on the chair. Or because we've got the mod tools and all the maps, I can just like pan a fucking camera in there and look up. Yeah, yeah, that's an option. Doesn't sound as fun. <laughs> we um, want to see you fall and hurt. That, that's so, the thing. There's there's a person who's been tuning into all my Half Life streams called Mister Business. Um, mm -hmm. He stayed with me basically through the entirety of this playthrough, um, and I was I was complaining to Mister Business that hard mode in Half Life Alex is not hard. Like, sure I'll die, sure I'll fuck something up in a combat challenge and and you know fail, but it's not. It doesn't feel like a survival game, right? Like if I am fighting against aliens and I am, you know, one of the last remaining members of the human resistance, I want to feel that. Like I want to crawl my way through this game because it's fucking difficult. I want the Dark Souls of Half-Life. Um, and without like really in-depth mods with tools that we just do not have right now because Valve has not released the SDK yet, 
Uh, we can't get that. So what I think is I think I might do um, a self-imposed Half-Life Alex very hard mode. So no using health shots, only health stations, which are few and far between, um, and hardcore mode. If I die, I die. I delete my save. Oh. Yeah. Um, maybe you should do That's hardcore gutsy. mode before you do the healing part. I was going to do it, like, I was going to combine it both because I'm, I'm pretty good at VR games. Um, and even, I'm even right. hard mode, it's not, not quite hard enough. So I think, I think if I combine both of them, I'd be okay. But we'll see. That's it, it would actually add a lot of tension because, <laughs> you know, some of the last areas in the game have some of the hardest combat encounters. Yeah. Um, because, you know, difficulty ramps should. linearly. Yeah. It's a video <laughs> game. Um, so that would, that would add a whole lot of tension. That would suck. To get so far yeah. through your damn playthrough and then just, oh, sorry. Yep. You, um, you're dead. Go so again. That's also why I think it's going to make a great stream. Because, of course, <laughs> I would stream all this. It would make a good stream. You should definitely do that. Um, I have noticed that um, on certain segments, I'm only going to say the name Jeff without going into any details. Um, I have I've learned that segment enough to be able to fuck with it a little bit, uh -huh. uh, which is which is a great feeling. Uh, if you've ever, ever played a horror game and and you know figured out the enemy AI so well that you can you can get through the scary parts by messing with them, uh, yeah, it's it's a good feeling. Yeah. Um... I figured it'd be a matter of time you'd be able to. I mean, you're on your just finished your third playthrough. Yeah, yeah. You should know how. I think I've got most of the game works by now, more or less. I think I've got 40, 40 hours played in there, uh, and I still I still haven't touched any or a lot of the custom stuff, um, like a lot of the mods which are coming out. Is um, there any official additions coming from Valve on this game, or are they Not say that we've heard. it's done? Not that we've heard. Okay, so I would, oh my game. god, I would pay 60 fucking dollars for an expansion pack tomorrow. <laughs> I, I okay. just want more. That's Not, all I not want. if they're not already working more. on it, because if it would be awful tomorrow if they put one out. <laughs> I, you know, I'd take it at this point. But what's <laughs> nice is that, um, that Half-Life Alex and Source 2 is at a technology point right now that they're not going to hit the same kind of issues that plagued Half-Life 3, where they say, no, the tech's not there. Because of these technical reasons, we cannot release Half-Life 3. It just wouldn't work. They fixed that stuff. It's done. Source 2 is ready to be used for Valve's internal games. Uh, which means, yeah, we, we, might, we might see more games coming out of Valve. That's not Ricochet. I mean... Or artifact. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, you have two other things on here that I don't know. I'm assuming one is Google Earth VR because it says uh, Waka Marine Valley, New Zealand. It's not. Oh, that's is that the game name of a fucking game. That's the one that's I was the talking name about. Of a fucking game. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, I bought that, um, and it's not great. <laughs> uh, oh, somebody, okay. um, there was somebody created like, yeah, somebody created this this uh, basically place in New Zealand in a game engine and you can walk around and just like enjoy the sights and sounds, but um, it is low fidelity enough that it still looks like a video game. Like at least in Google earth, when you're on street view or something like, you know, you're looking at a non moving picture, but it, you know, it feels kind of nice to be there to walk around and look at shit. Um, this, it just feels like you're walking around some kind of half baked unity asset flip. Um, oh. It's not that bad, but it's, it's pretty bad. Um, so yeah, I, I do not recommend that. I actually might refund it. Um, you could you did you get that charity bundle from uh, um, itch.io uh, a month I or two didn't ago? Because yeah, that because that's that was on there and that was the game. I couldn't okay. think of the name of the game, but I talked about it on the podcast. Okay. I mean, I thought it was really nice looking. I didn't think it looked like some kind of lazy asset thing. Like, the so, guy used a lot of assets generated from photos, didn't he? Yeah, but that's this is the thing about flat screen games versus VR games. So something might look great at this distance to a screen, but mm -hmm. when you're actually, like, looking at something up close like this, 
the magic quickly falls apart. Gotcha. Um, so that in, in VR and especially Val fucking ruined VR games um, because nothing looks good anymore. Mm-hmm. Just, it, it just doesn't. Um, so yeah, this, this game wasn't, it wasn't meant for, wasn't I mean, it, it supports VR, but I'm pretty sure yeah. it says in game that VR is not the necessarily the recommended way to experience it. It felt like that. Well, at least they call um, it out. Otherwise because like really the, the fun. lighting in that game is really good. I thought the assets yeah, could have been was... better. Like when you get really up close to something, you can tell that the, the assets are not, you know, 2020. But um, but the the lights were very, the lighting and stuff was very Unreal Engine. Yeah. Um. So I I wanted like I'm really searching for games, um, that are kind of like that chill out Google Earth, but you know more content. Um. So I bought Blue Planet VR, uh, or I, I got the demo of Blue Planet VR, which gives you a couple places to wander around, and it's uh, a mix of photogrammetry. Um, kind of, you know, 3D pictures and walking around 3D environments and just static. I don't know, here's some geometry and you're in the, in the fucking middle of it. Uh, and the stuff they've got in the demo, not not great. It's fine, but, you know, sitting in the middle of a canyon on like a, a rocky a rocky bridge with an endless drop, like, all right, that's kind of neat, but that's literally all there is to that level. It's no interactivity. There's no nothing. Like even the audio is kind of underwhelming. Um, I don't know. Like, I haven't found anything better than Google Earth for that kind of content, which is uh, a little disappointing because VR tourism is something that I desperately want to be a big thing. Yeah. What I about would, some of I the VR think... movies, like the Blue or uh, Deep Blue or whatever that was, with like the whale and shit? Yeah. So those are those are cool, but that's literally those three things in um in the Blue that you get. That's it. That's all the content there is. Oh, you can the blue around one there. that does have that. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's that's it. But yo, know, I would pay thirty bucks for a game where you just walk around like the Louvre or something, or, or run around a, a photogrammetry scanned, um, you know, Egyptian pyramid. I would love to do that shit. Um, but there's just not a whole lot of that content out there. And of course, with the world and the state it's in, I don't think any dev teams are really traveling internationally right now. Probably, probably not. not. Though, for stuff like the pyramids, they wouldn't have to travel. I guess that's like, true. That, that could be done just based off of the data that's probably in public record right now. Well, if you're, depending on the type of scanning you're using, because uh, a lot of these things are photogrammetry scans, which means you have to have both a 3D camera slash, it's not just a 3D camera, right? But you have to have um, a laser grid projection systems uh, that, literally scan and chunk up the physical geometry into a binary tree so oh, you can what I was, actually have but i was what i was talking what i guess for the pyramids what i was thinking it wouldn't be as much like you see exactly what's there it oh, would be more okay. of a like you would be in the cavities and stuff that they that exist but even some that they haven't even been able to get into yet like oh, the actual yeah. like um sonogram kind of stuff yeah yeah that could be cool yeah, I really want more more chill out VR games like that. Um, Cause I I was looking, I got desperate and I started looking through the you know most most purchased uh, section on on Steam for VR titles. I went through the first thirty games and I own like twenty six of them. So, well, VR I'm running is, out of you're, you're running out. <laughs> VR is I, the I have the, the goddamn library. We, we've known this though like we've known this yeah. since 2015 i was i was hoping though that with i guess it's really early since everybody bought an index but half-life alex sold over a million indexes itself um so we're and uh, again that's not anywhere near the population of people who have a mouse and keyboard um but we should be seeing more vr titles coming out because yeah there's more people the population has absolutely increased but you have to reach game a dev threshold takes a while to too. where, and you have Ooh, to reach a threshold it's be a while. where it makes financial sense. Just because there's more doesn't mean it makes financial sense, right? Valve it made financial sense because it's not just the game; they're selling the headsets, and those yeah. headsets. Were, 
<laughs> um, rumor has it that Valve is going to work with HP to produce a way cheaper headset that also has the uh, the off ear audio that the Index has, which would be really cool if people could get into uh, you know state of the art VR for five hundred bucks. Complete five hundred bucks. I could care less about the over ear. Give me the fucking knuckles. Yeah. Um, I agree, but the that sound system does way more than you think it does. Um, that, as far as immersion goes. To me, the physical aspect would be more so important. Like, I'll take my over the ears with knuckles, then off ear with the Vive controller. Yeah, I agree. I agree the knuckles are definitely in first place, but it's not, the off ear audio is not as distant a second place as you think it is. Um, and this yeah, is, I know, because I from... think it's probably third place. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's not. It's not. I would I would much rather have the screen of the OG Vive um than wow. the uh the audio of the OG Vive. Really? Like I, I would put the audio far above uh the visuals every day. Um and again, I'm gonna be biased because Half-Life Alex has incredible sound design. Like in something like Rec Room, who the fuck cares? Right? But on a game where audio really matters and it's it's really important to the immersion. Um, yeah, night and day difference. Absolutely so why, night and day difference. So why wouldn't a high quality headphone over ear be as good? Because uh, what off ear does, and they actually explain this in the final hours of Half Life Alex. What off ear audio does is that um, you know humans naturally hear not with sounds being injected into their ear canal, which is what earbuds or headphones will do. They use the entire shape of the ear to, you know actually manipulate and maneuver the sound and, and change the way stuff feels. Uh, the off-ear audio uses the entire ear. Um, and it, you know, it, it doesn't... I'm trying to, trying to figure out a, a good way to say this, but it, it almost feels real. Like, when you're hearing stuff through those headphones, it's way more believable than with just over-ear headphones. And I've got decent headphones. Um, it's, it's just completely different. Have you ever heard open back headphones? Yeah. Okay. How does that differ yeah, from still, still different? Um, yeah, it's it's still different because the the um, off ear audio system. It's literally the I just left that goal in, um, but it literally is right here, right? It's off of your ear, so it uses the entire ear. When you've got headphones in, you're just injecting sound, even with open back, right? It's a little better. Um, like open back has a little better uh, sound quality because it's not. You know, it's not that shape. Um, but the off ear stuff is going to feel way more natural and sound way more natural. Hmm. It's not fighting like against it. your biology, it's using it. I'll have to do an A B test on that. Yeah, yeah. you should. You absolutely I'd be curious should. for sure. But uh, I... do so, do so in a game that has good audio. Like, don't. Don't don't fucking do it in rec room or or the lab. Like do it in Half Life, Alex. Do it in something that matters. Is it possible to switch headphones on your headset? Um, it doesn't have a headphone jack like the Vive does. Um, but you can raise the headphones or even take them off. They're just like one screw a piece. You can remove those headphones to replace them with your own. Um, and that would be like Bluetooth or, or something else. Or another uh, audio routing system. The headset itself doesn't have one built in. Okay, so you'd have to run an audio cable from your computer. Yeah, or Bluetooth. Okay. Fuck Bluetooth. If we're going to do this for comparison's sake, we're not doing Bluetooth. <laughs> you could also just if use like automatic. Line. Like if you're using Bluetooth as comparison, like automatically, <laughs> your over your the off ear is going to sound better. Uh, you you could also just switch out the headsets like do one with the vive and one with the index very true that would actually work pretty well ah uh, well i wear airpods when i use vr oh, fuck off d <laughs> <laughs> airpods and vr that would feel so fucking weird fuck that no nah, it feels great <laughs> uh, Tom won't be able well to hear fun. us the rest of the podcast because he has his AirPods in. <laughs> it's true. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? What? 
So I think it's time to get to the next segment of this podcast real quick. I think it is. Um, Adam, you want to explain what we're about to do? Yes, it is. Uh, we're honestly a week late on this, but every month we take uh, the top plays from our Discord. Uh, these are our plays made by the community. Any game, not just Rocket League. Um, you can submit these plays on our Discord in our Plays of the Day channel. And they get posted to Twitter every day. Eric will select one and put it up there. Um, at the end of the month, we make a montage of all the best ones. And we're about to show you the said montage. Eric, are you ready to roll the clip? I'm ready to roll that beautiful bean footage. Are we ready to transition? We're ready to transition. Roll the beautiful bean footage. We got some cathode clip here. We'll chip up. And we'll double. Ooh, that's clean. There's so many doubles. Everyone is nailing doubles now. <laughs> it's because they're getting good. It's like the Ceiling shots have went away, and it's doubles and resets. <laughs> Here we got Draft Girl. By the way, she made a badass background for us. Check it out in the general chat. Yep. Oh, my what God. What a redirect. Jumping off the back wall redirect. I was going to say, why is there a miss? In oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's pretty. That's pretty. This guy, he was in chat earlier. Straight up beats Rocking on the out. kickoff. Oh, this is this one was really oh. pretty. I love that. Oh my I love God. that. It's so stylish. You got a little twisty up there. Put a little twizzler on it. And then twist around. Boom. So perfect. Fitzy. Fitzy, the reset master. I think people are getting used to that because watch this. <laughs> Never came. <laughs> He fakes a fucking reset and bumps the goalie out. Such a stupid goal. <laughs> That's beautiful. Stupid goal. Well thought out, though. Next, Ron. He's and part of our um, IGL roster, if anyone's interested in checking out whenever they're doing some work. But combining the two that we get a lot of, a reset double touch. Tap, tap, bam. All the mechanics. All of them. Just player one. Player one. I really enjoyed what this one. What is that control? <laughs> he gets bumped. It's like, well, thank you. That's effectively what happened here. It is like pops up. It's like, I'll go with it. Oh, it's so nice. Thanks for the there, Josh. I love we're getting Valorant clips. My yep. <laughs> oh my God, he can't be stopped. Bam. Oh my God. He's so quick to adjust Damn, his aim. Oh my God. <laughs> John Brar all day. All day, son. I love the change in momentum. Like, it's really small detail. But I just love how quick he's able to just, just get his quick. car reoriented. Yep. yep. Quick turnaround, aerial up, stylish shot. Joey. Joey's kind of like oh. fixed when it comes to my mind on his plays. But. That was a ooh. very close rebound. Yes. That, that angle was dirty. Like that double touch, that's not where you get double touches. <laughs> that's not where those happen. Reason, that's how this game works. Cole! You just shit on them, and then all of a sudden, you can't win a gunfight no matter what you do. Two on four right now. Hey. You have your old pole. You don't, you don't have to use it. So the mark. Well. Oh god, they're all for the okay. Smoking up the area. Oh, like one, maybe two to Uno. Oh my god. Just fucking oh, oh, his aim is so good. Holy shit. 
gets out of there last second. Three health. Oh, Alter. takes his gun too. Uh. Well, he's got one on. You oh. just better. Oh. Don't die to the robot. Oh. Get it, get it. Listen, listen. Oh, it's cut it close. Oh my God, Cole, you're just so much better. I don't have it. No. Yes. Oh. oh. Such oh. a sick ending. <laughs> so close. <laughs> he is better. He's fucking. He better. is better. That's a fact. <laughs> He's just better. He's straight up better. Oh shit. Josh ah. with the Twitch Prime sub for 30 months. <laughs> so, if you would like to be part of this badass montage comes out every month, just jump in our Discord and put your shit in the plays of the day. We take all sorts of gifts so you can get up there. But once again, a PSA, we had I think I said nine people that this hit. If you use GIF your game with Rocket League, League of Legends, any other game, hit the save button in the GIF your game app on any clip you submit. Otherwise, seven days later, it's gone and you ain't making it. Yeah. Because we are we don't have the storage capacity to be downloading all these clips as soon as they happen. So please hit save if you think it's a really sweet clip. And that's all I got for that PSA. PSA over. Thank you for that, Eric. PSA over. Thank you. <laughs> So, fellas, we got some news. We do. We do. Just a little bit. A little bit. Not very much. So, a small um, amount of news. So, Tom, uh, you, you put this in here. Uh, Sony's investing a uh, quarter of a billion dollars in Epic Games. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, what in the so, fuck details here? Uh, so, I, I kind of... One part of me thinks, well, it's just a sound investment. And it... it Basically is. Um, but the other part of me thinks that this has a little something to do with that uh, Unreal Engine 5 tech demo for the PS5 they put out, uh, what was it, about a month ago? Um, if if you are, you know, trying to, trying to make your console look badass and you want the company developing the engine that makes your console look the most badass to, to thrive, to survive, to build all kinds of cool, awesome shit. Uh, yeah, throw some money at them. So uh, Sony is now a minority stakeholder in Epic Games. So let's be perfectly honest. Epic Games didn't need help. Epic no. Games <laughs> grants money right now. It's not like a, this a little, company A little less fearful. than before, but... They're, I don't but think yeah, they're hurting. Still, yeah, they're, Fortnite they're is big. still a fucking monster. Yeah. So, I mean... They don't need, but it's probably nice. Yeah. My concern is, I mean, this is super like a conspiracy kind of bullshit, but man, I hope they don't pull off some shit to make the fucking Epic launch or Epic um, Unreal Engine proprietary. No, they can't. Uh, so Tim Sweeney, who's the CEO of Epic Games, is still the majority shareholder. So yes, it's his company. Right, right now, yes. I'm saying long play. I I don't really see that happening um, for for a wide variety of reasons. Like why why on fucking earth would you take the short term out of oh we're now a Sony propriety and a proprietor or whatever we're now a proprietary engine for for Sony um, if you can make all the money you have been making and more by not. Because Epic uh, because, is used on everything because, from phone games to consoles to PCs to even movies. They do a whole lot of work in Hollywood for CGI stuff. The reason you do it is because you don't have an option to do it because Sony becomes a majority owner. Yeah, I, I'm not super worried about that. Again, I hope I'll eat those words, but... It's just weird to me. I don't know why Sony would do it otherwise. Like, I don't know what their point in doing that is. There's no need. It's not like, uh, think of um, Gorilla Games. Like, there's no need for that. Or Naughty Dog. It's not something like that. This but is keep in a... mind, it's also, it, they're not like, it's not like buying a PlayStation, right? You're, you're not buying a consumer good. This is an investment. And they think that they can make money on it long term, whether through ancillary things like people using, you know, UN5 to push really cool games on the PS5 or through just selling that shit off when they get bored. 
but I've never heard of Sony being treating things as an investment company. Um, That's, they've done that. They've done that before. Were they doing it as an investment, or were they doing it as a long term strategy? They had a bail on. Um. Yeah. I, I couldn't that, that that's that's my that, that's that's what my concern is here but either way that's pure speculation kind of bullshit also news capcom says it's game sale 80 percent digital and raising rising raising goddamn eric rising i can't say it's very <laughs> surprising raising raising but no um their, their games are selling digitally news yep. flash people buy digital now <laughs> Um, I think I'm one of the minorities where like with switch, I buy physical a lot in games that I don't plan on playing long term. I'll buy physical a lot, but mm. I do a shit ton of digital. And Capcom I, I probably buy physical, physical steam games. I can't, uh, I can't remember the last time I bought a physical copy of anything. Uh, I can, and it was an NES game. Oh yeah. The, the only things I buy physical are literally collector's items now and not like not like Death Stranding or Fallout 76, the collector's edition. Fuck that bullshit. Um, but the only things I buy physically are literally collecting games, like from old consoles. Everything else will exist in my Steam library. I can't share that shit. Like, we have two Switches. I'm not going to buy two of every game just because I want it digital. That's super expensive. Um, yep. luckily for me, like Renee and I's crossover for our libraries is fairly minimal. Like we've got the big hitters, right? Like we've both got Zelda, mm -hmm. um, but we've both have Super Ball. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, yes, Scott. Our, call our out libraries don't really cross over. Call out that whatever, however you want. But after five games, that's the price of a third Switch. If you're the majority of games on the Switch are not $60 games. The majority of games no, no, no. on the Switch are shitty indie games. The majority of the games that you play on the Switch are shitty indie <laughs> games. Because you're a shitty All indie right. guy. Wow. I forgot. You're only playing the best AAA releases loaded with microtransactions. Tell me how that Fallout 76 tastes. Tom's just too cool to deal with the AAAs. It's true. He's got to fight the system. No, not but enough um... walking, not enough simulator. Oh, God, fuck off. Fucking Dear Esther, my ass. That's not a fucking game. Anyway. Wow. Um, uh, tell me how you really feel. Um, All right. How many, how many subscriber points to make Eric play Dear Esther in its entirety on stream? Oh, we are doing that. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I'm putting 100 bucks on it right now. Don't do would you play it? Where my Eric, mouth is. would you play it for $100? Uh, we'll figure it out. and... And a post-game story synopsis from you. I want to see you dive deep into that lore. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Off-stream, we'll come up with something. We will get something, some kind of like, people do this, I'll do that. <laughs> it's not okay. going to be easy because fuck those. They're not fucking games. They're bad fucking movies that you have to <laughs> sit through and hit left. <laughs> bad movies? What if it's a good movie? Yeah. What if it's a great story? Yeah, uh, Dobby calls out Firewatch. Firewatch was fucking lit. Ha! Get it? Get it, guys? <laughs> lit. Uh, Fire. Firewatch was so good that Valve literally took the entire dev studio, Campo Santo, and hired them. They just said, nah, you're part of Valve now. And they That's are how doing... good Firewatch was. And they helped build the story of Half-Life Alex. Oh, so that's what they end up working on. Sweet. Yep. Anyway. We'll figure something out to make me suffer. Until then, <laughs> um, there was a operation to make Eric suffer is underway. <laughs> in case you're wondering, can we uh, call it? Was... Can we call it Eric suffrage? No, no, it's no. different. It's a different thing. <laughs> I appreciate. I know the joke, it's a different thing, but, but it no. sounds good. Over under how many settings it takes? Sittings? <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking, Scott. Not settings. Sittings one. Dear Esther I mean, is really, really small. But Scott's calling out the fact I'm going to fall asleep while I play it. Yeah, you you very well may see me fall asleep on stream while playing a game when this happens. Maybe but, we'll, we'll have to figure out a game. Might not have to be Dear Esther. Something. You know like. what? I'll tell you what. We could do this. Bubsy 3D. I'll go play, 
I'll go play uh, FIFA or Madden. Those are good games, though. You don't like the developer, but they're actually good games. I hate everything about those games. You hate everything about that developer. It's a sports I mean, game. yeah, I, I can hate both. I am not exclusive in my hate. I am an equal hate provider. Ah, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> Seal copy of <laughs> Super Mario Bros. Breaks record for the most expensive game. Yep. Dear God, I wish I had a copy sealed, of that. Sealed copy Super Mario Brothers on the NES, and I totally fucking buried the lead because I didn't. Yeah, I when I was reading the headline, I'm like, show me. notes. Tom oh didn't no, put the price. I hope he knows. No, it. I didn't. Um, one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. Oh my god. One hundred and fourteen k. Dear Lord, for a copy of Super Mario Bros. Yep. Now you know what's cool is I remember buying uh, like a, a second backup copy of Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt at a used game store when I was a kid. You know how much I paid? Ten cents. I literally <laughs> handed the man a dime, and he handed me Mario slash Duck Hunt. <laughs> I told Ten you guys, and I I have like so Gina had a lot of shit in her basement mm -hmm. back home. And we have like mint condition manuals of like Mario Heart or Mario Duck Hunt mm -hmm. and like oh. the original NES manuals, like in mint condition, still in initial packaging. That's pretty cool. Fucking nutty. <laughs> maybe you could get, uh, maybe you could sell this for a little less than uh, 114,000. I don't particularly care to sell them. It's just really cool to have. I am that guy. I think it's cool to have. I will keep it. Um, Final bit of news we got here. Devolver Digital had a di or had a digital conference. That phrasing really got me there. Yep. God, I can't Devolver read Devolver Digital Digital Conference thing. I haven't <laughs> checked it out at all. I got the, the cliff notes on you know, some of the stuff they were um, looking at. So Fall Guys, uh, Serious Sam 4 is on there, uh, which I will almost certainly buy um, because I love Serious Sam. Like... You know I'm the guy who loves story and pressing left, and that's the only gameplay I like. Uh, but Serious Sam quote, is... On quote, the, gameplay. Yeah, Serious Sam is the quintessential shooter where it's just got bad one-liners, there's no story, and you blow shit up in hilariously gory ways. I yeah, love is, Serious Sam. It is the complete opposite of your walking, pretentious art games. Exactly. It is all gameplay, no <laughs> fucking artistic value <laughs> uh i i don't know some if artistic I... value okay yes like the actual like 3d art kind of stuff yes but i'm saying like in the way that like a story is portrayed and told in a very elegant fashion like serious amp fuck that it's gonna go duke nukem i'm gonna fucking rip off your head and but down the your neck fact right that it it takes that that position in itself is a form of art. Uh-huh. Just I, like Doom 2016, where you're getting an expose dump and Doom Guy throws away the monitor. That is actually a piece of art. That is saying we are rejecting the current state of games today. Okay, I'm about it to not be able to something. crash with you motherfuckers anymore. That is, <laughs> fuck you guys. You guys are reaching new levels I can't support anymore. If, if you are if you are going to talk about the creative process and, and how games are art, you are talking to the wrong two people, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, Adam, do you want to talk about Soma a little bit? Or, or um, is he dead? <laughs> no, because I think yeah, Eric could Soma? appreciate Soma. Yeah, so I'm okay. down with Soma. That's a horror game. Or a psychological game. However you want to phrase it. I can get down on that. Actually, I think Eric would like Soma a lot. Honestly. Yeah. I think he'd like it. I, like, one of what really fascinated me is that one of the most story laden games to come out in the past five years is like one of Eric's favorites, Nier Automata. <laughs> that surprised the <laughs> fuck out of me. It's just like, guys, the story. I'm like, story? <laughs> Why are you talking about story? No, 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 no. I, I, I Eric can't likes the story. He just doesn't want it to only be the story. Yes. Or, or well, only be so, the story and the visuals. Until you guys beat that game to completion, I can't discuss with you what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not 
I, I'm going to say the story is not a story. It's not just the fact it's the story. That game does something incredibly unique, and unless you play it through, you won't know. It's really fair. well done. That's fair. That was a great all-around game. Dobby says yes. I'm the co- once I realized the combat is what you made of it. I really got into it more. And like the complete customization of everything about your character was a really cool spin. One of you two need to fucking play it so I can talk to you about it. I I played it. Part of me wants to play it, but the fact that I beat it, Tom, I've read and I've watched a lot of stuff about it because it did hit all the like game design circles and and pretentious artsy analysis bullshit channels that, that you like to complain about. So I know a whole fucking ton about the game already including all the spoilery stuff but it's not a fucking pretentious game is what i love about it you don't have to be pretentious to tell stuff in a unique and fun way (laughs) uh it is completely pretentious there's nothing pretentious about that game (laughs) it is it is pulled off in a very uh not ham-fisted way but it's artsy it's extremely artsy not really just multiple ending like you walk they, they, left instead of right, they give you a weird ending for it. That's fun. I'm, I'm talking about the, the what's Eric's definition? What's of Eric's story. definition of art? Then, <laughs> <laughs> literally a painting. That's it. No, uh, you're talking the story itself. Like the story, it's it's a fun story. It's more of a post apoc story. And like, I, I won't get in too much deeper, but. <laughs> It's a there deep a, story. It's not pretentious, I don't feel. I I think it is it is philosophy 201 in a video game. But that doesn't make it thing. That's not that doesn't thing. make it pretentious. It doesn't feel like it has its nose up at you as it's walking by you. <laughs> that game so, does not feel like that at all. Where something like DRS is like, oh, if you don't enjoy it. You just don't understand what game development's about. You don't understand what it means to be a good story. Okay, but Fuck, also, also, Eric, is. how much of that is your perception of what Dear Esther is, and how much of that is actually the game intended to be that way? Yeah, I don't think like you've just it. because. And I haven't even played Dear Esther, but I there's a part of the artsy games are pretentious argument that I really dislike in the fact that just because you think that the game developers have their nose up and think anything else is below them or something is also the fault of the person who thinks that because you don't get to say what the intentions of the artist were. That's true. But I want a gameplay when I'm playing a fucking game. Then don't buy Dear Esther. I, I won't. <laughs> but I also it's won't It's not call for it you. Game. It's not for you. <laughs> A game minus gameplay is not a game to me. I won't buy it. I don't own it. Uh, then you have to define gameplay, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Interactive art. Whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. My if you want to ga- so keep laggy. the definition of game, that's fine, too. But uh, anyways. Um, oh, Smiggle asks me, what's to my left? A panther cage? Well, to my left is this side. Uh, to the, the camera's left is my, that's a furnace heater thing. It makes fire when it's too cold in here. Well, anyway, I think that's all we actually got. Oh, I guess yeah. we should uh, jump out of this match then. So, uh, yeah. Well, kind of can't. But anyway, <laughs> uh, to that effect, <laughs> um, we'll do the quick rundown. Oh, hey, we won somehow. Good job, um, guys. Good game. How did that work? So... For anyone who is currently watching on Twitch, we put stuff on YouTube. We put all of our little bites, sound bites, plays of the month, all that fun stuff you can find on our YouTube at YouTube. Our pretentious takes. Yes. 72 pin connector. <laughs> um, outside of that, if you're over there, we actually stream live on Twitch, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Um, if you're obviously you're on one of them um but we also give updates on our plays of the day when we're going live on for the podcast all that kind of fun stuff at our twitter at uh, 72 pc underscore official and um if that's too much different shit for you just go to our website 72 pinconnector.com all the links are there for you 
um, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Did I miss anything? Um, no, yeah. no, I don't think we, we missed anything. You, uh, all right. We're going to roll that top 10 plays of the month again for everybody on our way out. And then, uh, we'll see you next week. Yep. Bye everyone. Game on. Frames on this map. Uh, one more is back in so I think not back in search, sorry. Search. Probably, one is probably on drag. Oh my god. how this game works you just shit on them and then all of a sudden you can't win a gunfight no matter what you do oh. hey you have your old pole. you don't you don't have to use it oh god they're all for the okay you know i think like one maybe two to peak but like Oh my god. Just fucking god. better. Just fucking oh! better. Oh! How the fuck did that hit you? Alter. Uh. You oh! just better. Don't die to the robot. Get it, get it. Oh my god, Cole, you're just so much better. I don't have it. No! Yes! Oh!
put Let's me in jail. Go. I'm better! <laughs>